hey, Sean, I've been a video editor for over 20 years now, professionally for 15 years, but really in the last, only in the last like three years or so have I really started using custom keyboards and custom keyboard shortcuts. Now, whenever I get any program, I always like to learn the shortcuts, especially in professional programs, because from the shortcuts, you can learn a lot of features that the program offers, especially that, that it offers quickly at a, at a stroke or two. Things, features and, and things that may help you be a better editor or creator, do things faster or easier, or do things that you didn't even think you could do. And so in this video, I wanted to walk through how to change the custom keys in Final Cut Pro, a couple of the things that I learned from the default key set, and then some of the changes that I've made in different keyboard, custom keyboards that I've made for myself for different things that I do when I'm working in Final Cut. So to bring up the custom keyboard, the first thing you're gonna do is come up to the Final Cut Pro menu, drop it down, and the third thing is commands. And we're gonna click customize. And you can see here I have, there's the default command set, but then I also have these custom command sets, my main setup and my multicam setup. So we're gonna click Customize and we're gonna note that Option Command K will bring this up for us in the future without having to go up there. So the command editor has three main things going on it. It has this giant graphic representation of the keyboard. Down here in the bottom right, it has the key detail window. And then this is just a massive list of commands, things that you can do with a keystroke in Final Cut. Uh, and so if we look at our default set, we'll start with A. A is the select tool. So when I press A when I'm editing, it gives me the arrow that I can move around. And B is the blade tool, T is the trim tool, P is the position tool. So these are the things that we use pretty frequently um, to switch things around. I don't wanna change these. Z is the zoom tool. These are the things that, that we do. Now, one through nine in Final Cut, by default with no modifier, and you can see here in the key detail that if I hold command, it'll go to the library browser. If I hold shift, it'll take the source media, audio and video, whatever that means. Um, so this is what I mean. When I come into the default, I can learn that there's, oh, maybe I there's some reason to go source media, audio and video. I don't know what that does in a clip, but maybe there's a reason to go to it. Um, and that's what happened the first time of, oh, cut and switch to viewer angle one, viewer angle two, three, all the way through nine. This is for multicam editing in Final Cut. And if you don't use multicam editing, you really should. It's a, it's a fantastic way to, if you're recording multiple cameras or what I do, every single one of my projects for YouTube, this is a single 4K camera that I open a multicam clip and then I make a 4K track and then I add a second video track and it's just the same camera file, but I zoom in so it makes that like fake second camera that, that the tight shot. And by using these one and two keys, if I close this and come out here, this is a multicam clip, and if I open this up, you can see that there's a wide shot, and then there's a tight shot, and then there's the audio from the audio recorder. And if I come back out to my timeline, just by pressing one and two, if I press two, it's gonna cut to that wide shot, wherever the playhead is, and I can look at the waveforms as he's talking and say, okay, right at this little spot, that's when I wanna cut back to the wide. And so this is a really handy tool to make really quick work of multicam editing, but, a, when I'm editing in multicam, I'm usually using two or three cameras tops. Once I did a project for the St. Louis Symphony, which had six cameras and an audio track, and they give me nine. By default, nine of my keys switch multicam things. And so even when I'm doing a multicam project, most of the time while editing it, I'm not actually switching between the cameras. So this caused me to say, well, I wanna make my own custom keyboard where those keys can do other things. And by default in Final Cut to like close this browser, which I don't need right now, I'm not adding any clips. Uh, it's Command Control One. I think Command Four gets rid of that. Command Shift Seven brings up the multicam viewer. Command Seven is scopes. Um, it's inconsistent which modifiers and stuff. So the first thing that I did in my custom commands was I made my one through seven manipulate my, my interface. So if I want my browser, I press one. If I don't want it and I just want a bigger screen, I press one, my clips disappear, my viewer gets bigger. Two, I can get rid of the timeline if I want to. Uh, four brings up the inspector. Five brings up the effects. If I have a clip selected, six will... Well, it's already up. Six will bring up the color inspector and seven will bring those scopes 
um, up and down. So all these things make it really easy to change my workspace quickly so that I'm always maximizing the amount of my screen that is being used for whatever task I'm doing. Another thing that Final Cut does really well is keywords. When you're going through all of your keywords, control one through seven by default, um, if we come back to the default setup, um, four, for example, control four, apply keyword tag four. So when you're out here and you bring up your keywords, um, you can hold control and add whatever keyword number four is to those clips. So if you're saying like, these clips are inside, outside, day, night, people, not people, whatever keywords you're applying, if that's something that you do frequently, make a custom keyboard where just when you're doing that task, you don't have to hold any modifiers. You can just go through and say one, keyword one, two, keyword two, um, and, and you'll find that you're a little bit faster. And so the other thing that I learned looking at the default key set was these bracket keys. And I've seen people use these, the, the open bracket, no modifiers, select left edge, select right edge, or select left and right edges. And what so by default, when you're editing these open control brackets, they change if I'm selecting the left edge of that clip or the right edge, and then you can use the comma and period keys, or what it's the carrots above them really, to like make fine-tune edits on here. Um, but I noticed that if you hold option, if I bring this up, holding option on this will trim the start. And that was something that's appealing to me because the way I edit, and you may be different, but the way I edit is I like to come in here and if I want it to start right about there, I can hold option and press that open bracket and it just cl clips off the, the start or I can clip off the end. And so I use that a lot. So I made my custom keyboard not need the option key. My main setup lets these things with no modifier trim the start, trim the end, or trim to the selection. So. That's something that's made me a lot faster with the way that I edit. Another thing I did was uh, automatic speed. I set to zero, which by default, zero doesn't do anything. Um, but automatic speed makes a 60 frame per second or a 30 frame, whatever frame rate your clip is, it'll match it to the timeline. And so if you record in 60 frames a second and make a timeline at 24 frames a second, when you play that 60 frames per second, it's going to see normal speed and it's just going to drop a bunch of those those frames so that it plays back at the normal speed. But when you're trying to do slow motion from something like that, you want to slow it down to the exact point which has one frame of each of the 60 frames per second for each frame of the 24 frames a second of your project. It sounds confusing, but it, it gives you the slowest slow motion, the smoothest, best quality slow motion that you can have from higher frame rate clips into your timeline. And Automatic speed lets you do that really quickly. And you could type in, you know, 40% speed, 20% speed, things like that. Um, but if I highlight a bunch of these clips and I make them normal speed with shift N, by the way. So this is them playing at normal speed, but these are 120 frame per second clips. So by pressing zero, it's going to automatically slow them all down to, in this case, 20%. Um, this clip here was filmed at 60 frames per second, so it only slowed down to 40%, so it matches that 24 frames a second. And now when I play, it's playing at 24 frames a second where each frame is its own frame from the original clip. So it gives you this perfect smooth slow motion, and I just press one button to do it. So if that's the way that you shoot, then having a key that does that for you is really handy. And then the other key that I set is my minus key, brings uh, brings all my volumes down to zero. If I click this, it mutes a clip. So when I'm adding a bunch of B-roll on top of a project, I can add it all on top of the project, select it all, and mute it with one button. By default, and I do not understand, um, again, you just have your own keys, but by default, if I press minus, it gives me a place to type in time code, and I can type in one second, and it'll move the playhead back one second. I can press minus and type 12, and it'll go back 12 frames. Plus is the opposite. I can type in three seconds, and it'll move the playhead forward three seconds. I That doesn't do anything for me with the, most of the way I edit, so switching these plus and minus keys to do other things for me is a lot more helpful and actually does speed me up and make me a better editor. So what I will leave you with lastly is looking at the custom keys this is where I found things like by default, the G key does toggle storyline mode. And I've looked into trying to find out what this means and I can't. And I asked a Ripple's, uh, Ripple training live stream what they knew about it. 
no one knew anything. And the best guess was like, it makes it easier to add a clip to a secondary storyline if you're holding it close to that secondary storyline on the magnetic timeline, which is just dumb. But meanwhile, if you want to add a gap, which I do all the time, it's option W by default to add a gap. So with my custom keyboard, I made it so that G adds a gap and I have nothing to toggle that storyline mode because that's not something I use. So the whole point of this video is go through, see what you can learn from the default setting or other YouTube videos of people sharing what they've done with their uh, custom keyboard setups because there's different features that you might not have known that you could use that'll make you a lot faster if you take the time to learn what's out there. And you can do that by seeing what Apple has made available and then picking and choosing what works best with the particular way that you edit. Uh, and I think for me, the Y key is open audition. Apple by default gave us a whole bunch on this Y key for open audition, create audition, replace and add to audition. Uh, and I just do not use audition. I think I've messed with it one time to see what it did and I got confused and frustrated and I left it alone. I think for me, maybe this is an indication of, hey, Apple thinks I should try this audition thing. Maybe I should try this audition thing and see if it's worth anything. So that's my video. I hope it was enjoyable. I hope you learned something. Um, mess with some of the keys, see what works for you, change the ones that you don't use um, to things that you do use and dig in to see maybe what's there that you didn't know about. I'm always learning things and I've been using this program since the day it came out. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. I have tried to record this video eight times. This will be my ninth time. And I felt like I've rushed or I've sounded inauthentic or I've rambled too much. And hopefully this ninth time, I like it and I post it. And if so, I hope you liked it too. I will, if this worked, I will put this at the end of the video. And this will be at the beginning. <sighs> hey, Sean, I've been...